I am Jeff Foxworthy, and welcome to Gamekeeper Podcast. If you want to learn more about farming for wildlife and habitat management, then buddy, you are in the right place. Join the Gamekeeper crew direct from Mossy Oak Land Enhancement Studio as they discuss the latest wildlife and habitat management practices, news, and of course, hunting. There's no telling what you'll learn, but I'm going to tell you, I bet it's interesting. Enjoy. Five, three, two, one. All right, guys, here we are once again, West Point, Mississippi. We are going to talk about box calls today. Oh, yeah. Looking at Toxic. Bobby Box Call. You, hey, man. I've, it, sat, I've sat in the dark with everything, woods waking up listening to Bobby Call on the box. Now, I love a box call. He loves to yelp at him early, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. Yeah. Especially that box call. I, I love a box Pro, call. What, you, what do you think the box call was one of the one of the first turkey calls? I don't know. Had to be, had wouldn't to it? Had to be. Well, so look, let me introduce our Yeah, my Google. man. I'm all jumping all the way up in it. We've got Lyle Gilbert from Hound's Tooth Call. In the house. The yes, sir. Thank you. Thank Lyle, you for having me. glad to have you over there. Awesome. Thank you. Got you. A, you got a neat brand. That's a, a neat name. Yeah. Uh, Bobby loves that Hound's Tooth hat. And that yeah, whole he's a Hound's Tooth kind of guy yeah. all the way around. Is. Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, That's, yeah. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Bobby is such a big fan of the Crimson Tide. Oh, my goodness. Look, I know. I understand. It's all right. It's all right. I appreciate it. Being but it is here. a great name. Thank you. Yeah, it is. Thank you. It's catchy. You'd be surprised at how many people don't catch on to it. They're like, and they're from Alabama. They go, Hound's Tooth, Game Calls, where are you from? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Turkey hunting yeah. house. Where do you think you from? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Is that getting, where you're from? Is yeah, Bowler G? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Tuscaloosa. Uh, okay. You're getting kind of close. Yeah, Bowler G. Uh, uh, careful. Uh, Bowler G Cafe. You better, you better stay right. yourself over in Green County. <laughs> You All know, right. I am a Sumter County boy. Oh, my gosh. Are you really? Yeah, I'm all my family's from Livingston. Oh, wow. Sure Wait was. a minute. There's a direct connection I'm between a, Livingston and I want Turkey you to stand Y'all, up and face away from me. I'll see if I've seen you before. We're <laughs> Negative. I do. Look, look, you would catch me because I don't run. <laughs> <laughs> you just have me, though. Yeah, uh, Livingston, uh, Livingston and Belmont. Yeah. Oh, good. You're, out, you're on the safe side and, of town. And, out and there. look, this will this will throw you a good one. I married a dial. Oh, okay. Oh that my gosh! Yeah, look, there's yeah. more you dials. Surra- you've got turkey there's all more, around. You. There's more dials in Smiths in Sumter County. Yeah. Well, my my uh, my wife's side is more cattle. So uh, cattle, cattle. Could yeah, you give us permission to hunt on the dial property? No, I couldn't. Oh, okay. Well, I, was could trying not. I wish I could. <laughs> is there some property you could give us <laughs> <laughs> anywhere? Yeah, yeah I'm, uh, look, I'm I'm that that part. And uh, Scuba, Mississippi, that's mm-hmm. that's home to me. That's Long awesome. Livingston. Long line of turkey hunters from mm-hmm. back then. It no is. Doubt. That yep. explains a lot. It, does. it really does. That, well, look, I, that's I, God's country. It I'll is. say that for it. That's my, if, yeah. I, if, I, if Bobby didn't spot. make me be here today, I would be there today. All right, let's change. Let's get serious here for a second. We were talking about box calls. Yeah. Wow, when when we're, <clears throat> we're take us give us a little history of the box yeah. call. Man, box calls. Of course, you know me growing up. My history started with turkey hunting with my father, and that would be M. L. Lynch mm-hmm. in my on my side, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, one of those from my my, exactly. And that single sided Lynch box, mm-hmm. foolproof. the foolproof. Oh, yeah. the foolproof. I, I, I've listened to my dad tell stories about getting on his bicycle and dry, and and you know bicycling into the town right there in Livingston, and Mr. Lynch would come through. I guess at a hardware store there, and yep. he he'd buy those boxes, and uh, so that's that's kind of where box calls, you know, that I know the most of as far as history goes, started there. I mean, in in the South, it was Lynch. Mm-hmm. Um, right. and there's no, I've, the, the, the Lynch box that I've got now, you, I've used it so much. You can see my thumbprint on the outside of it or where I always held it. It's yeah. that, you know, right. so, um, that single sided box to me is, that was, it was King in the South here. Yeah, it's iconic. Kind of, no I have, doubt about it. No I doubt. have a box. <clears throat> it's actually two sided. And about five or six years ago at Christmas, I opened this box wrapped kind of funky and it was from Daddy, and it was my grandfather's home name for her, which I never knew, died the day after I was born, and it was a box call that he turkey hunted with from 1934. Wow. And it'll make a turkey sound. It's not great. I guess you could chalk it up. Was so, it a Lynch? No, but it was not a Lynch. And the thing about it, there were box call people way before Lynch, Yeah. but he was the pioneer of precision making them for Milling the public them, right. and selling them. Yeah. To best I know, but there, and you know... Uh, have Daniel you, took a picture, sent it to one of these historians, 
And he immediately told him, that's a such and such. Oh, my gosh, that's a such. And, and I remember hearing the name before. So if you can think of some of the other early box call makers, but I can't remember the name. I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting here drawing a blank on one, but Primo's did a remake of a box. Gibson. Was it a, it, was it no, a, it wasn't a Gibson. Get with that, that Don't would, think it was a Gibson. That may be before. Turpin. Could it be a turpin? Mm, I've got a turpin. Have you I, hunted with it? No, I've not. Have you thought about taking yeah, it? Yeah, but I'm so scared to take it out. It's in the gun safe down there. It's, it's cool. I just, I don't want to get it out. I'll bring it back. Oh my gosh, everybody look at that thing. I'm scared of something sure. happened to it. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know what the origin is. So my point all... in saying that, it, and I know in that same time frame that uh, Mr. Fred Stimson and a guy named Jim Ratcliffe were, actually just Jim Ratcliffe was making his own mouth calls and they were in a big competition all the time. That's before. And I think that was probably in the 30s, too. When it was the mouth call, they were hand-making them way back then. So the origins of the box have to go way, way before that. Oh, yeah. I, would, I wouldn't doubt that at all. But, I mean, you know, a story in the Turkey Federation would probably be the one to tell us. And we need to look into that. So, Lyle, how did you get into the call-making business? Uh, you know, the, it's kind of – well, I started off – I was a guide. I actually ran a farm in Scuba. Um, down at Shyhammock Creek, y'all probably I I know you know Chris Crow very well. We oh, all yeah, know him. Yeah. Well, Chris, Chris is like one of my best friends. I I I started there when I got out of junior college, and we were you know guiding hunters and right. whatnot. And I got a little older, and so and, for the record, that's not scuba, that's Wahala. That well, that's right. That, that is Wahala. You're correct. That's a suburb of scuba. That's right, <laughs> suburb of scuba. And uh, anyway, I met my wife and ended up. Uh, moving towards Tuscaloosa and, and the guy that when I'm, when we bought this house and moved in this, this older gentleman, Mr. Maddox, he mm -hmm. came over there and, and, uh, we got to be friends. He loved a turkey hunt, but he was a master woodworker. Hmm. And, he, and I was like, let's make some turkey calls. And that's literally how it started. Huh. You know, was just tinkering around with tube calls and pot calls and, you know, and then a few box calls and, and, uh, Later on, I ended up building mouth calls, and heck, now I'm doing them every day. So that's yeah. awesome. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's it's been a journey, and I, I but I enjoy. I've enjoyed every bit of it. Yeah, that's know, cool. I love to hear that because the time is the most important thing. You spend it doing something you love. So yeah. the so the the box call is is it a big part of Houndstooth's offering? Y yes, it is. Uh, it, it's and it's becoming more of an offering, you know, as far as like what we're doing. I've got a couple things that, that you know, I, we just talked about Lynch. I have such a love for that single sided box. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've, I'm probably fixing to put out a single sided box for next season. It's got a distinct sound that just that's what it's, you know, there's no other box going to have that same sound. Let me make a suggestion for you. So Lynch had the foolproof. That's you, correct. You could have the Lanny proof. The Lanny proof. Not, I think it'd be <laughs> a good. They, one. It would cost. It would cost yeah. him too much to make it out of carbon steel. <laughs> yeah. Carbon steel. No, I, I, I guess they're saying that you you destroy it pretty quick. I, I guess so. I I guess pretty rough on stuff. Pretty He's, rough I am pretty on rough on stuff. That's for sure. Well, well yeah. me, I can. I mean, you see, I'd, uh, there we I'm go. the same way. Yeah. <laughs> well, to get back serious, don't you think? Whether you're a beginner or you're a seasoned expert like Carrie sitting over here on this other couch, you a box call has a place in your vest. It, it does. Uh, I, I love a box call. Uh, you know, a lot of times I won't start out in the mornings early with it, but when we get to about 8, 30, 9 o'clock, and I've been on a turkey and I hadn't, hadn't worked out, and I'm going to walk. That's what the first mm -hmm. thing I'm gonna hit. Mm -hmm. Just just sliding, just easing through. You know? If I was exactly for, if I was I forced to have one, it it <clears throat> it would be a box. Personally, well, e everybody a, a got box clients. is versatile. If you'll if you'll learn to run it different ways, mm -hmm. because everybody normally when you hear them running a box, they got it, you know, lid on top mm -hmm. right there, and they're doing it like that. There's so many different ways you can hold that box. Just right. If I want like really a lot of control and I'm gonna sit down and actually call to a turkey, I will hold it just like this. So what he's doing, you can't see him. He's he's actually the body of the Flipped box. It. The bottom is the lid. So That's he, right. he is We're running he is running the body and the lid is stationary. So he's running it opposite of what people do. And I, I've done that before and it does give you more control. When you get old and your hands are shaky. It gives uh, you the you and you can bring that volume back down just by taking that. See, I'm rolling it over. I'm getting two notes besides sitting there taking it. And 
I cannot get that control like I want it. But man, when I take it and sit it yep. down, and then I can sit to a turkey. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds good. So it's pretty neat. Pretty neat little. It's very Bobby. Versatile. Bobby is wishing before this day started that he would have made a deal with all of y'all. Whatever call you run on air, you're going to leave it here for me. <laughs> <laughs> Except Josh. I didn't yeah, want to. No, you don't want to. Josh is mouth call. Josh is you're like, <laughs> you try to get me to take them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's not a real big box. Is what? that y'all's Dixie Hen? Which one is that? It, it is. It's the Dixie Hen. It has a mahogany oh, body and purple heart. I and, actually, that combination right there, I've had and, one for so you, long. Look, I'm telling you that. In in the call building world, I, I started off using, with this particular box, uh, walnut for the body and pecan for the lid. And you would get a pecan lid and that, you know, I'd be stuffed them to the side going, oh, that's going to be perfect. And, and then the pretty ones, they all sounded horrible. And there wasn't no saving them. It was just, you know, hmm. uh, it had that spot through it. But anyway, it that's the most consistent wood I have ever found. Let's say that again. It's got a it, 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 mahogany and purple heart. Mahogany and purple heart. Excuse me, but it's it's very consistent on its yield when we're building box calls. Uh-huh. I but don't the, have near the duds. They all just they're they're awesome. Yeah, but the purple heart is that he's talking about an efficiency thing, but they sound great. Yeah, it, it's and the sound the sound is top notch. It really is. What what kind of tree is a purple heart? Look, you're going to have to... Uh, Dudley? Hit that Google I'm, I'm, button over there. I'm about to I'm look ask it the up. tree guy. We got it's not, Dudley does not know where it's from. Mac, only, we need him. I only oh know the God. natives. You know, that's probably some kind of tropical... It's uh, so, uh, South American, I think. I think that is exactly Okay, we're going to get think. Dudley a Quick pass. to defend. Quick I'm to defend. Googling it. Bobby Dudley said if you'll send natives. him on a field trip to South America, he'll <laughs> yeah, learn that. Yeah, ideal. Dendro. <laughs> yeah. You know, like mahogany, there's... Oh, there's different that's species. That's right. There's different species of mahogany. Are called yep. so. Yep. Well, I tell you what, it's 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 pure purple. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, even purple heart. A lot of lids that you'll find it'll have a brownish tint and won't mm-hmm. be quite as purple. But yeah. mm-hmm. but uh, that's it, a great that's a great box call. It's a it's neat. I, I've color. always done yeah. like him. He's speaking just like my playbook almost. And I don't have. I don't think like it's smart to do this or that. It's just something that kind of comes to you but i once i've you know with first daylight i'm probably on a most of the time on mouth call bot call mm-hmm. but but for one, some other reason I've, I've always liked and there's a little you know strategy behind it when i'm easing around trying to strike one up in the morning i almost always have used a box call uh not a tube call or even loud on my but one thing i've always liked to do is if i strike a turkey with one call I want to be able to switch to another call when I start working him. Exactly. So for me, I'd like to strike him on the box call and not use my mouth call. That's primarily what I would use working him. <laughs> but then if I'm for, well, I don't know why I do this, but up in the morning, I feel more comfortable as my second call. You know, I said before, I like to sound like two different hens. I'll be running a box call with a mouth call up in the morning. And I don't know why, but for some reason, I'm, I, I just, grab a pot call to do that at daylight. That is exactly what I do. And mm-hmm. so I love, I my thing, I'm security blanket is having that one side of the box I have, and it's a purple heart and mahogany combination just like that. And I, I can't even tell you how many thousands of times I've yelped trying to strike a turkey with it. See these people? When the clock strikes five, it's not the end. It's just the beginning. They have to do these things. They have to do those things. Enter the all-new LS Tractor MT2 and MT2E, a relentless force of innovation, redesigned with a new hood and cab built for comfort and visibility, with enhanced lifting capacity to get the job done, making these people the ones everyone else calls those people. Visit your local LS Tractor dealer today. Moultrie has pioneered the game management category. Today, Moultrie is one of the best-selling brands of feeders and seeders in the world and they continue to innovate with new technology that gamekeepers will rely on. Moultrie products are always field tested and designed for hunters by hunters, combining forward thinking, innovation with time tested practicality. Moultrie, first in feeders since 1979. All right, so guys, Moultrie is offering our listeners a 15% site-wide discount at MoultriePeeders.com. Use the code Mossy Oak with a capital M, Mossy Oak at MoultriePeeders.com and get that 15% discount. 
tell us about all the different kind of calls you can make on on the box. It's the well. Uh, I mean, you can pretty much all the way from clucks and purrs down to you know any kind of assembly yelps, uh, tree yelps. Um, you can even gobble on it. Now, at this box, I actually when I built this this box. I don't gobble at turkeys. I have friends that gobble and they love it and that, that's what they do. But this box here, I wanted a box that would stay quiet without a piece of white paper in it. Mm -hmm. So when you sit it down there, if you notice it doesn't yeah, it doesn't right. really make any noise. It has to come up here to All activate right. it. Where, that's you know, cool. uh, another box when you most of the other boxes you're already starting to get sound back mm -hmm. and forth. Mm -hmm. So I never meant for this thing to to really be like a gobble box. But yeah. All the other stuff from cutting, you know, you can do it all. Yeah, let's hear you do some stuff on sure. it. Sure. Let's do some cutting on it. It's pretty simple. I'll let that weight of that lid, that way it's just sitting there and my hand just rests right there. And I'll He's keep got it. his thumb on it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. So holding almost mm -hmm. straight up and down. You know, yelps. If I'm gonna walk around a lot of times, like we were talking about walking and striking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn some chalk on it. There you go. Beautiful. Cut a few times. Yes. Listen, you know, um, purrs, you can take your thumb, put it to the side, and just kind of. You'll figure out your own little little technique. That's the cool thing about a box. Everybody runs something a mm. little different. Mm -hmm. uh, Sit down to a turkey. I'm going to flip it around like we were sitting here with Toxics talking about just the control. If I want to get loud with it, too, it has a little different kind of tone to it mm -hmm. when you flip it over. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, you know, everything does something with a turkey call, whether it be a pot or a box. So how do you figure out what side of that box is? It, is one side going to sound better or different than the other? <clears throat> I tell you, when we're... Tuning them, one side, generally to me, to my ear, always, when, and maybe we shouldn't say it sounds better than the other. It sounds more uh, natural to my ear because I've probably heard a hen uh, that matches one of those sides. Mm. But um, this box is, this wood is so consistent, just like what we were talking. It's yeah. Well, a lot of it is it's yeah. hard to be ambidextrous. Yeah. So I just, one side, I just it's more natural yeah, for that's me. That's right. And I, know, I struggle going the other way. I know yeah. on the old Lynch's world champion, mm -hmm. it said, you know, this side imitates the hen, this side imitates that's the right. gobbler. Right. I, I remember my dad swapped sides on it and, and always ran the gobbler side, and, and it, it sounded like a great hen. And you know? what they did to do that was vary the thicknesses of the walls, mm -hmm. okay, uh -huh. which gave it pitch differences, mm -hmm. you know, a gobbler yelp or a hen yelp. What about that chalk? Is there it, that's a, that's a special chalk, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's wax free, resin free. Um, blue chalk, uh, and maybe it's me on this, but and I've had plenty of customers tell me it's something about that blue chalk, and I get that way back from putting blue chalk on. And I was taught you put that blue chalk on that lynch box, and not brown chalk, not white chalk. And there was companies selling brown and white chalk, but I can tell you when we're tuning them. I can put brown chalk on it, and I can put blue chalk on it, and I can tell it might be a smidge, but I can tell it. You may not be able to tell it, but I can tell it just something about blue chalk and, and box calls. It just I don't know. The sound that I get from it is what I've always loved. I hmm. got the wrong colored chalk. That might be your problem. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, you. I mean, it's not chalk that you can just go buy anywhere. It's uh no. It it, it in some places. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of manufacturers of chalk. The biggest thing about buying chalk, just buying it from, you know, say a, a place that's more along the lines of an industry, you know, like right. that they have for railroad or stuff like that. You don't know what the additives are in it. So, yeah. but yes, this is a formulated chalk for this box or for what we do. You know, yeah. I listened to that. It reminded me of something, uh, and I had a higher pitch box call at the time, but, um, uh, so I don't know if there's truth to it or not. I didn't even ask Bob just about this, but Harold Knight, who might as well be one, he just said <laughs> he said he always had some calls towards the end of the season that were higher pitched. And I was like, why that? Because he was using a high pitched box, and that would do it. All you had to do was pull down on the lid a little more. And I said, why? He said, well, 
the hens that are left to breed late in the season most of the time are younger hens, like a year olds and stuff. Hmm. And so he said a lot of times a higher pitch call really turn one on late in the season. Because I, I don't know. Cause that, I mean, that, that, honestly, I'm not negating anything well, he would ever tell me. But I will say – a few times I kind of remembered what he said and tried that. It seemed like it did. Make well, I, I, and I, that's funny you said that. And you may know this fellow, Doxy. Do you, did you ever know a guy named Jerry Gardner from Harpersville, Alabama? I did. I did. Heart of Dixie Game Call. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was one of the best turkey hunters I ever got to turkey hunt going with him as a kid. And that was one of the things that he told me all the time, just what you said. Mm -hmm. Those younger hens, late season, they're the, they're the leftovers. And that's what you want to sound like. I know? mean, you know, mm. the way he presented it, he said, you know, that's the same way we hear that about does sometimes that, you know, a month after the peak rut, there's a kind of a secondary. And sometimes that's the yearling does mm -hmm. that come in. I, maybe I'm some of the wives tell, but that's what I've always heard. And he was saying the same thing happens with these young hens. They have a lot higher pitch or not deep and raspy, you know. Yeah. I don't know. What about a paddle box? What can you tell us about that? <clears throat> you know, paddle boxes, you get that uh, a lot. Of course, they're a lot longer usually. Well, they'll cut and yeah, carry. They'll cut and carry. They're a higher pitch. Uh um, I, I've seen a lot of people do, you know, key, they can use key key on them a little bit easier than these shorter type boxes. Uh, usually have a narrower lid mm -hmm. too as Real well. Thin. Yeah. And that's something I, I have never, I, I've got several that, that, you know, I've just never jumped off into that. that I'm very uh, minimal mm -hmm. person when I'm taking stuff in the woods. I don't want to have a whole lot, but I used to keep one on the dash of my truck for just riding around checking turkeys and stuff. And on a windy guy, day. On a windy oh, Shoot, mm -hmm. I'd do it on a steel day. <laughs> find one in another county with it. Yeah, they can reach out. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, but they're yeah, kind of bulky, it. too. They are. That's why I always kept it on the truck Yeah, mm -hmm. right there on the dash. Mm -hmm. What do you put in your box when it's in your vest to keep it from squeaking and making noise? Generally, the, if it's any other box than this, I usually just have a rubber band on this just because it doesn't yeah. make a whole lot That's of racket. That's a great feature. But like with my old Lynch box, I've always got a paper towel in there wrapped up just like my daddy toilet did. <laughs> yeah. Toilet paper. Nothing, right. nothing dual, fancy. Dual Blue purpose. toilet paper. Dual <laughs> purpose. When I stick, my leftover, I've had extra glove in there. I'll stick that in there sometimes. Yes. I'm so tired of it. Squawking mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's funny. It used to be the best clock I ever made was when you bumped your box cob. Oh, yeah. 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 I wish I could do that on purpose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lenny, I had to tell you, hunting with you, you've got your phone in your pocket. You're constantly checking on X. Yep. Very valuable key features all in those things. It really is. From the compass mode to recent imagery, I mean, it really helps you understand where you are spatially, where you're headed, where a turkey is, where he was. It's a heck of a tool to use in the spring woods. I didn't realize that they're updating these maps every couple of weeks. Yeah, I'd have never known about that clear cut that you were hunting <laughs> if I didn't have that recent imagery. Well, you know, and you could share some waypoints with me. I could share some points with you. You're exactly yeah. right. I mean, it has that capability. It does have that sharing capability, which is great. You know, you're wanting to show me where your goblin turkeys are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, Onyx, it's a great app. It, it's it, a great app. So guys can go to onyxmaps.com backslash hunt and use code Mossy Oak to get 20% off. There you go. I'm a big fan of Onyx. I am too. <laughs> what else about box calls are we not asking you? Well, uh... I think we've covered this, but this is a box call right here from a different era in time. Look oh, at that wow. thing. Wow, I wish we could show that to people. What's that guy? And, and the cool thing about that is, is that when it's I... like a miniature steamboat. That's yeah. right. It is a box, but it's also a uh, friction peg and slate. It has a, you know, a Look peg at that. In it. So... So what do you call that? Well, it is a... It is originally called a success call made by Mr. Ernest Black. Wow. Hmm. And he hunted the Rayleigh area over there, Rayleigh's Lake area over there in Walhalla. Mm -hmm. How about that? For yeah. years. And it was, uh, from what I understand, I had one of these growing up, but I didn't know where it came from because the guy wouldn't tell me where he got it for me. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I lost it and time came around. George Mayfield yeah. came to my shop and he had, he said, you see this? And I was like, oh my gosh, that's that same call. And he, that's where we figured out. And I didn't realize, I didn't realize he actually hunted next door to me. That's how that guy got that. 
Ha. But anyway, uh, we have to give him the credit of that. And uh, I had talked to his grandson. I said, I'd love to make them uh, if you didn't mind. And I'd love to call it the success call. So uh, giving him a little credit on it. But anyway, it is a neat little collar. You run it just like a box. Hmm. That's like to you almost a oh, very turkey. Yeah. Woodsy. You, that's very, right. you very turkey. Take it, put it in your hand. You know, but it almost Look has the bubble cluck for you, Bobby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sure does. Uh, look, I and that's you can impressive. you can take anybody and that can run it. Pretty neat little call. So it's got slate in there it, on a peg. It, it, it almost it sounds like. To, but, but this is what'll blow your mind. Like the the box that George gave me to you know to to remaster this. It had like a crack right here. It had check marks from. I'm assuming dead turkeys. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and it sounded just like this one, brand new. And and the the thing about it was, is that you never sand it. You have to sand a slate all the time or buff it, you know, to keep it from your peg. This one here, I've never huh. had to take one loose. Where's the, where's, where's the slate it, part? It kind of sounds, we were talking oh, about thank jet. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. It kind of sounds like a jet. Slate. Oh, I'll, and look, oh, wow. growing up in that era that we were talking about, yeah. like, I'll uh, be the lynch. Look, but, but, I love a, I, I love a hey, lynch jet. Mm -hmm. the, yes, that's that. Huh. I was just going to say that. Look inside of it, Dudley. Yeah, Mr. George had one of these when we had him on uh, the yeah. first time. He brought one oh, and, and was... Uh, after after we got off air. Well, he, George is the one that reintroduced me back to it and... and I did the research on on on, on that, and that's. I mean, George is the one that pretty much explained that, to me where that thing came from. Yeah, that's cool. What I love seeing the old come back in the middle. Dudley, you're natural. You, you shame, might you might could kill one. You with shame Lanny with the yepping on that thing, man. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> that's neat, isn't it? That it, is it, really neat. It, I yeah, got to you have know the one. thing is cool about that. That might be good for the. Youngins. Yeah, the early it, it music. Is. Yeah. It's got a lot of less room for error than maybe just a regular box. It, Look at that. Bobby it, it, even sounds somewhat good on it. Bobby, and, your your bubble clucks sounds I, I awesome. I got one of these. Well, do <laughs> you? <laughs> of course he does. Well, he's a collector. He's got some cool stuff. I know he does. Uh, of, Man, course, no. of course he does. Bobby's trying to bribe you out of your pet one. <laughs> no, 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 no. So I, I'm saying I've got one of these. I know you do now. I don't need. I, I no wonder you hadn't said a word this whole time. Yeah, uh, that's a great little call. That is true. So none of y'all knew that, that, did he? <laughs> no, I've, I've never not. seen that. I've never even seen the one you've had. Lenny, there's so much about me that you don't know. I don't believe and that. Y'all hunt <laughs> together all the time. Yeah. yeah, I've had to do things. I have to turn yeah. around over here and do things. <laughs> they that, hunt together all the time. Yeah, and Lenny is the last person who's going to know what's going on in Bobby's turkey wood. I promise you one thing. If you hunt with, with Bobby, you need to let him sit down first. You never let him, never take his direction on where to sit. Oh, down. I know. I'll go, I don't want to get into that today. We've no. got a guest over here. Yeah, you're right. Lyle, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Look, yeah, true turkey hunters right here. That's right. Yeah. We're all friends till turkey 100%. season. 100%. <laughs> and then, it is, and then, and then everybody's it becomes lying. warfare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did me wrong one morning. Oh, one morning hey, look, make so up for the 10 did before it a bunch that of times, so I took them both I gotta just take two minutes or less I took them both it was late in the season and Lanny still hadn't killed a turkey Bobby had just killed one the day before over like the dummy line somewhere but hey you know neither one of them had just a super good year but especially Lanny let's go get him a turkey Bobby I, I know where there should be a couple gobbling and we'd get down there and they were there, but they moved matter of fact we were like going and we invited Bobby just to tag along yeah I said Bobby come on <laughs> yeah so felt sorry for him. Ended up on the other side across a bunch of backwater. We waited over there. We got set, struck them, and they were smoking hot. They were a I bunch mean, of two year olds. It was late in the season, time. no hens around. And I just said, Yeah, get up there, get set. They're coming, they're coming. And I just dive in behind them, calling. They're closer, calling. They're closer. Boom. And I see a turkey go down and I jump up and I go out there. And then I see Bobby on the turkey. I said, Bobby, I thought we were taking Lanny. Well, I know, I know, I know. But, I mean, I had a shot, and I think they were leaving, and whatever like that. So, anyway, Bobby's sitting there holding the turkey, and Lanny walks up, and he's got his lip kind of trying to be a good sport poked out. And I said, Bobby, don't you feel bad? He goes, nope, not at all. <laughs> not a bit. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> turkey, yeah. turkey hunting is war. Good times. It so, is. that's why Lanny said, let him sit down first. Then you can cut him off. That's exactly right. Yeah, we, we've had a lot of fun in the Oh, my gosh. That stuff. is funny. They have. We have. 
Um, yeah. I've got a box call question. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, so I'm always scared to try to adjust a box call for fear that I'll, I'll never be able to get it back to where it was. Um, is that, should I just mess with it and, and tighten the screw or loosen the screw or is well, it, you know, every box call that I have ever owned, I've always tuned it to my ear. Uh, and, you know, you don't want to you don't want to compress it where it's like that, no, and their okay. screw heads all the way down. Just get it. You know, you can get it firm, but just where you can take. It. And what it's going to do is is the the lower that lid is, it's going to end up making it a actually clear yelp. And as you hmm. bring it out, you're going to start adding the back end of the yelp, that back. You know, that last part of it where it get that rasp mm-hmm. and then once you get it to kind of where you want it you know some people have an ear and they like a clear clear sound mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's plenty don't i wouldn't be mm-hmm. afraid of that and then also is there ever a time when you need to like recondition the the lip or the sides of the call with like sanded or normally if i hit these sides uh you could take some 120 Mm-hmm. And just scuff it, not not work it back and forth. Just hit it a time or two and leave it alone. Uh, sometimes the lid, it's going to get a, you'll you'll open your box and it'll be real slick right there where it's you know hitting the the rails on the call, and just take that one twenty. Some people say go left or right across it. I've always gone. Right. With the grain, no, yeah, no, I call it north, north and, and south. south. Yeah. Well, those yeah. the grain, like that. all the grains on all the lids I've ever looked at were running. Yeah, right. north, well, north yeah, south. that's that's and that's so, the way yeah. it should. But yeah. oh. that's the way I will sand it, and I don't, you know, I don't keep it in one spot. I try to, you know, move it around. You don't want to, you don't want to take any of the curvature off of it. But you also doesn't have to, you know, you're not going to change it by doing what you're talking about, as long as you're not just sitting there on that curvature dead center. Okay, but. Uh, I do it all the time to them. So, you know, I can understand where somebody that just hasn't ever done it is kind of scared to mess up their call. And I've done you know, it to a bunch of them, Dudley, and I'm one because I guess I wasn't scared. But what I found was I could get it right back like it was. But I would also find that something I liked any better was very close to what it already was. Hmm. It wasn't much up or down. Okay. You know, no fear. I, I wouldn't worry about it. And then. As far as chalking it goes, do you, I mean, is that, do you just chalk it before you leave the truck or do you chalk it every other week? Or you know, what? chalking it is just kind of a, a thing of feel, you know, you'll, you'll know on it cause yeah. you'll, it'll get, it'll, it'll just doesn't play quite yeah, right. It seems like every two or three days I want to. That's right. But this wood holds chalk so well. It, the, it seems like I don't have to chalk this one as much as I did like the, uh, the one the I've tongue. had, I mean, even though. You just even without the chalk, it seemed to still sound good. That yeah, would probably that's, depend that's on the exactly. species of wood and species the grain. of wood and the way you run it and just the you know. So I, I looked up purple heart and oh, uh, God, I hope I'm getting the pronunciation, but the genus is Peltogeny. <clears throat> and there's 19 species in that genus. Oh my God. There's one called Peltogeny purpurea that I, I wouldn't doubt just by the name of it. That, that sounds right. But uh, it's in the pea bean family. It's a, it's Fabaceae. Huh. And so, you know, we've got a local wood called Redbud that has a really pretty colored mm-hmm. heartwood. I know they're not, they're not even in the same genus, but it does have that pretty color. Oh, yeah. But, you know, that purple heart reminds me of the old growth sweet gum that they used to call red gum. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of the old timers will tell you about it, but it has a very similar color. Hmm. That's a real, so, that's a real dense wood too. Oh yeah. It's very, very dense. dense. Yeah. 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 I don't know where it sits on the Janka scale, but I know, you know, Janka scale of hardness. Yeah. I, yeah, look, I, I never s- heard of that scale. No, Speaking of that hardness, have you ever made one yeah. out of Bodoc? It's like a specific I, gravity. I have never made a box call out of Bodoc, but I have made tube calls and, and that's, you got to have carbide tip. It'll make it, a good striker. Uh, it generally cutting up the blank is worse than turning it. Trying mm, to get wow. the getting it where it's a one by one mm-hmm. and that it, I mean you're gonna run ruin is saw that the, blades. Is that the most cantankerous wood you've ever worked with? It it is cantankerous. I mean that stuff splits too. It dries and yeah. I mean it's it's it when you get a good piece of it and it's dry and it you know that somebody's taking care of it the ends putting wax on it and right. letting it properly dry. Man, it makes a heck of a. a, a 
turkey call. I know some friends that make pot calls out of it. Mm-hmm. But I've always that's a labor of love. Yeah, there, I, I've always made like trumpet calls, um, stuff like that. Uh, small pieces. Yeah, small pieces, air air driven pieces. Um, makes an awesome tube call. Hmm. Uh, Yo, Osage on. Oh yeah, and it always it it all. I usually do like a run of owl hooters ever so often in, in Osage, and wow. uh, they start off they look like gold, and then they you know they. Turn that yeah, they oxidize. Brown. That's right. Yeah, and I was reading the same about Purple Heart. If you if you it, it treat will, it, it will yeah. brown up. Che- if you cherry, don't treat it, Cherry will do the same thing mm-hmm. in a fresh call. It'll get dark, you know, darker. But yeah, uh, that, I I say I guess I always said that's Sumter County's exotic wood. Yeah, 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 for sure. There's so, a bunch of it. You ain't kidding. Hmm. Osage, Bodoc, there are, horse apple. Yeah, yeah. Edge. When you say horse apple to somebody, they go, "What are you talking yeah. about?" So you know, Osage orange, but uh, Bodox, yeah. Boise Art. Uh, I the know arc. for historic historians' sake, I know there's old fence rolls with Bodoc. Yeah, fence, fence posts. posts. And I asked probably 20 years ago, my uncle Bud. He said, at that time, they were over 100 years old, and they were just as solid. And they don't rot. Oh, yeah. But uh, what's cool is you can dig up some of those old fence posts. Mud cured. And they have an iridescence, almost like you're looking at turkey feathers. and uh, But it's almost green. Wow. Uh, so it doesn't rot, but it, it changes right. colors. It, they uh, call it mud cured in the call making community. Mud okay. cured Osage. So Ooh. it's just the bottom of that yeah. fence post. The bottom turns. of that fence post. You talk about dense. It oh, is yeah. so dense. It'll eat up a chainsaw blade. It like is. Like iron. Silica. So, uh, you see sparks. Yeah. How about that? Uh, what else about a box call do we can you teach us? Well, I'll tell you. A lot of I think one of the things where people might go that, that they can make their box calling go to a different level is how they hold the box. Uh, you know, I see a lot of people they'll come to a show and they'll grab that thing and they'll they're they're killing the sound. Yeah. You know, the whole Squeezing point it. of that is is vibration. So that's why I want to get just I just it's sitting there where I can control it. And instead of Beautiful. instead of taking it and a lot of people yeah, want to lift the lid. These that's boxes right. aren't made to lift yeah, the lid. Yeah. We just want to drag it. Yeah. Speed it up. So he's basically got the weight of the box. I that's mean, the right. weight of the that lid is. is the only weight. There. Yeah. You. We don't want to. We don't want to grab it. You, I've seen people grab it, and you see the knuckles start mm-hmm. turning white. I'm like, hey, what's up? it ain't gonna run off. Yeah. 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 You, you got it. It ain't gonna go anywhere. You got yeah. it. Uh. And just. Yeah, I've saved one other thing. I was talking about our first guest today, and he was so gifted at the pot call, but he actually, like a true artist, he was running. You can't see this. I'm even show it on the TV part. He was, you know, he engages both hands, so people are grabbing the box call and just running the lid and forgetting about the other side. Yeah. Watch him run that call. He is working both sides very gently, though, but he's, see? watch his other hand, too. So he's actually using both hands. Yeah, it, I, and you're exactly right. Like when a pot call sits in my hand and I'm I'm running it, nine times out of ten I'm not looking at it. But if I turn back, you can see that pot call. That that's like a shock, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And it, and and me by not just same way with that box, not hardening up, you know, tensing my hand up. I'm not I'm not killing that call. I'm giving that call life by letting it lay there mm-hmm. and do its thing. The Furminator is the industry's most versatile piece of food plot equipment, allowing plotters to do every step of the process, working the soil, adding seed and soil supplements, and compacting. From start to finish, with a single implement, it's hassle-free by design. Set it for the seed size and simply drive the tractor, and the Furminator does the rest. Check it out at theferminator.com. Hey guys, Dudley from Gamekeepers here. I want to tell you about the all-new Gunner Dog Bowl. It's designed for home and built for travel. It's customizable, leak-resistant, light on weight, solid on durability, and rust-proof. Like other Gunner products, they're made in Nashville and designed for everywhere. Nosler is known for their bullets, and now they're making suppressors. Nosler suppressors are made for hunting. Adding a Nosler suppressor to your rifle will make you a quieter, more accurate, and more effective hunter. Protect your hearing and disturb less game with a Nosler suppressor. The time to hunt quiet is now. Learn more at Nosler.com. 
So if a guy walks into Woods and Waters and wants to buy one of those box calls, how many does he have to go through to get one that sounds that good? Now, be honest with us. Well, all of them do, Bobby. Come on. I'll tell you this. On this type wood, and, and I'm giving a shout-out to anybody that's using that, that is far as is turning out boxes that aren't duds, and every call maker has duds. Very few <laughs> turn out to be duds with this this wood. Now, I have a pile of walnut and hickory. Sycamore. Uh, that stuff. Poplar. You can have 10 you know, that look beautiful, and then when we start the tuning process, you might have five that make it. And then it just depends on you can't see it. It's 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 one of those things you can't see why with your eye because it's something to do with the wood. It's not the measurementation. It's not that. It's just you got into a spot where the wood's a little different. So, so that's to, high. It, that that you can't beat that. What we're no doing. heck no. Yeah. But uh, the question would be, and it's not really about what someone would shop for right there. But if you find a dud, is it typically the box or the lid? Uh, that's a bigger on, problem. On what I've been doing. With like say walnut right. and, and mm-hmm. pecan, it'll generally be the lid. Hmm. So you the could, lid. yeah, I possibly can, you could right. inter, you could take it off, it, put a new lid on. Yeah. do you want to try some chain or change the lids on some boxes? Yeah, I, I, I've got lids at my shop that are several different kinds, and a lot of times we'll try. When, when we were coming up with this box, I had like five or six different different lids, and that every time it gravitated <clears> towards purple heart. Hmm. And and it's just you know it's so y'all tune these you know, hands so, so, yeah. every one of them <laughs> yes yes every one of them's tuned sometimes you'll find something where we might thin the inside of that box it's not rolling over like it like I want it to mm-hmm. and you know we'll take a blade or a knife and I'll start scraping that side and what I'll do when we're tuning them I'll and and I don't have time to sit there and scrape on it and I put that in the problem box over here. And then when I get time, I'll make a loop around, and I'll sit down, and I'll start working on boxes. I might get five or six of them done, and then i got to go do something else. But that's that's generally the, the, the yield of excellent working collars is very low with these two woods. Hmm. That's, so, good it's, it that's awesome, y'all, a hand tune. Yeah, you know, a friction <clears throat> call, I can just about look at the wood, you know, when we're running pots, and... I can just about tell you if it's going to be how I need to glue it up. Hmm. I mean, there's different little tricks that we use, but anyway, and it's the same way, you know, it, it but you can spot a dud. I can almost spot a dud on that. that on a pot call? On a pot call by the wood grain on it. Huh. Yeah. Is it wider you know, if you, or coarser? If you get, we'll get some pots where you get got a little too close to where a limb came into the trunk uh-huh. mm-hmm. and it gets a little swirly. It's so much, it's dense. And you know, it, the denser it is, it just start doesn't resonate that on a friction call. Mm-hmm. It actually starts to kill it. I got a pot call. I bought it at Woods and Waters mm-hmm. many, many years ago. I think it's called a Dixie Hen. Yeah, it, it's one of your calls. Yes, sir. It sure sounds. I mean, I, Th- that that is a walnut with a uh, cherry laminates, and. It is a very consistent call. Yeah, a it slate is. call? It is. Yeah, it's a slate. It is beautiful. I, if I lost it, I'd be sick. Have you ever made a box with a slate? Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Have you, anybody ever tried to make a slate? I used to own one of those. It was my dad's, and it had a little square of slate in the middle of the lid. Oh, wow. And it was one-sided. So, yeah. <clears throat> and Look, I, uh, I, that's another yeah. one oh, that I lost. Do you, do you have one, Bobby? <laughs> Bo- 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 Bobby, Bobby has got, one. Bobby has one. Dude, where, where'd you get it from, Bobby? So the story is, oh, goodness. I, I, no, what's the truth? Not the 25 story. 25 years ago, I bought one at an NW, this guy, it was called Kicking Birds. Yep. That's right. Kickin okay. Birds. And I bought one, I killed 20 something turkeys with it, had, had marked. Bobby, well, you can kill 20 something turkeys. And I lost, life. I lost it. I, I chased a turkey, made I a know big where loop, he lost it. We're and still I lost it. For it. And I, I was so sick. I spent a whole day walking my But loop. you still have the one no, that I. No, no, let me finish the story. So, yeah. but after I had bought it, Al cheat them. Yeah, mm-hmm. love the way it sounded. In the dear, next, very dear friend. In the next NWTF, I went and I bought him one, and gave it to him. And so when he found out I lost mine, he gave me that one. But it doesn't sound near as good as the one I lost. But it's a slate, mm-hmm. slate uh, paddle, and it, it. Everybody looks at it. And so it's, I was wondering if you how you could do that. You couldn't. Could you put slate on top of the yeah. box? But it, would that one work? You'd have to go into the yeah. See that the box that Bobby's talking about 
it is in uh, yeah. inlaid, really, mm-hmm. the yeah. sheet of it. And I got you. And to give it that curvature, I bet that took some yeah. workmanship. Look, I can't find one. I have. I promise imagine, y'all, I have. We so much everywhere for it. dust. Yeah. I Somebody bring it back. Yeah. It, it was a great sounding. But call. you still have that one, right? Yeah. Yes. I yeah. remember. I gave. But, I so you. Bobby gave me that box. And and wanted me to study it up, study right, on it, right. and I did. Mm-hmm. And I think I was in the middle of moving shops or something, and, and it got packed up. And look, it was all I, I thought. I was I was kind of worried. <laughs> <laughs> I told Bobby, I said, "Look, I know it's here. I got to find it. Everything's fine." He was he was nice, but I knew that box meant a lot to him. And I finally found it, and it was like six seven months later when I found <laughs> it. But I got it to him. But I I saw one of those boxes on eBay. I know. I did. It was the same box call you had, Kicking Bird. Yeah. And uh, it had just ended. Wow. It had just ended. I've, and I thought about you. I was like, man, I bet Bobby would have loved to know known that thing yeah, was on there. Good sound a little call for sure. Yeah. But it was a slate box. And it was heavy. I think yeah. almost it was like the, this part of the body is that long. Very deep. Very deep. And I, it almost like felt like a piece of teak. You know, teak wood in your hand. Yeah. So you're going to make a one-sided box for next year. That's my plan. Yeah, and so what? what those same two woods. That is where I'm. That's yeah. where I'm going. That's what I'll with. do. Count me in. Yeah, got you. I want to buy one. Me too. Yeah, look. Yeah, y'all be my first first people. Yeah, bring us one, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. <laughs> yeah. and, Bob, and, Bob, and Bobby, will, Bobby, Bobby will buy them all for us as a, as Christmas, a, as a Christmas, Christmas present, present this year. Right. Yeah. 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 He's so, uh, do you ever do anything? Can you cackle on your box do you ever fool with that i mean I, well, it's yeah, pretty I mean, easy to cut on a box yeah, call it's pretty but, easy to cut i mean you can do a fly down i know because yeah I, well, like a, you know there. a fly down is just beautiful you know cackling i remember growing up yeah my dad would say you cackle you know and he'd go yeah 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 i never do that anymore my, like, da- my yeah. dad did it all the time and, and yeah. when you just said that you know like the people i hunt well i never hear them do that anymore mm-hmm. I hear turkeys every once in a while. I wonder why. I don't know. Maybe I, cackle. Just, I think when, I cackle all the time. Yeah, I mean, did. that didn't come midday. Along I'm midday cackling. <laughs> that was sure I mean, the time your dad was doing it was like some of the first people ever doing it. So <clears throat> it was a new sound. Well, but, but now you see people cut on them a lot. You know, where yeah. they put their thumb as a bumper and, and pop it. Oh yeah. He was, you know, moving the lid really fast. You know, kind of a yeah. yelp note yeah. really and, fast. And, and people, you know, they're just. Uh, it's, it's not easy it's to like do. It's like a fast. <laughs> yuck, 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 yuck. It's really not a cackle. It's almost like a yelp. Mm-hmm. Like a fast yeah. yelp, yeah. excited exactly. yelp. Exactly. But it just—it seems like people don't do that very much like they used to. I don't. I'm... And then I always used to pick the lid up yeah. between notes, and then I, yeah. I was actually at the Bass Pro headquarters when I was in junior high, and, and one of the salespeople came up to me and showed me how to keep it on the lid on the, and slide yeah. it back and forth, and then he showed me that you can. You can hold the the lid between your two fingers. Yeah. Also, similar to what I um, that's and kind it, of way I play it. Uh, it's just if you're trying to do it easy and not mess up, and uh, that that oh, always yeah. works well for me. I tell you, Lyle, it's been interesting. I don't that's know what else thing. to ask you. I'm, I, I I know I I kind of told you we'd love to hear one of your favorite turkey stories. Maybe yeah. maybe yeah. you could tell us that, and if there's any more questions, we can think of them here. I tell you, you know. I guess one of the most, uh, and he's a prior guest, was was calling up some a turkey for George, mm-hmm. and uh, and it really wasn't for George. It was as George put it to me. It was he said, "This is your hunt," and uh, I didn't know George that that well at that time, and and uh, we were we were hunting some turkeys that were off roosted off of some water right there, and I didn't know George that well that at that point. In time and, and anyway, he's kind of pushing me along, and he he leaned over and and I was I was kind of hesitant about you know pushing on like I would do turkey hunt, but he assured me, hey, you do it, you play it like you want to play it, and I was like, okay, and anyway, I must have played it right. I yipped up these turkeys, and uh, I killed this turkey, and and the turkeys out there flopping, and I. I just kind of kept calling. I remember this dirt mound. It was about from, from, I guess, maybe from me to you, Bobby. And 
I'm pointed this way. George is right there. And it was like a periscope. I don't know how that turkey that turkey came to me after I kept calling. And uh, But anyway, I can remember I, tur- I was just looked, and this turkey head just starts coming up over this hump of dirt. And George is there, and I'm like, there he is right there, George. And George turned around, and I mean, I don't know how he hit him. I mean, he's from me to you. It's by, I mean, it's like that. And I mean ear holding. It had a hole in it. And uh, I was sitting there with George and, and just kind of going over the hunt. And uh, he's always, George's always been somebody that's always pushed me. Like, with the, once we got to be friends with the cause, you know, keep keep pushing. Keep Don't worry about what people think. Just keep rolling. You keep, do, do right. Be a good person. Keep rolling. And uh, anyway, George, uh, George told me, he said, you know, he said, there's not too many people that's ever called up turkeys for me. And I thought that was a, a cool thing coming from him uh, because I imagine a lot of people didn't call turkeys up for him. He was mm-hmm. always taking care of somebody else, you know, as a guide and whatnot. And, and there's a bunch of them. And I always want to – I've always liked George. George's always been, been a close friend. And every, t- every the one thing about it, the hunts I've been on George, they've always been like something funny about them, something something off, off the wall and uh, – I actually called a turkey off George one morning for, uh, for a guy named Steve Bowman uh, that was with BASS, and and Steve had a, a blue Bassmaster hat on his head when he killed him. I was and I never, you know, it's always something funny with it. So, mm-hmm. uh, but no, I, I, that's one of my favorites. I could go on and on about. Favorites. Bobby's called a few turkeys off George too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Look, I know. They've been neighbors yeah. for a very long time. Yeah, we have. I, I know. I know y'all have. That, that, uh, George called me one time. He was stuck back there at the back of that place. I was thin and te- I was. I was thin and. You're timber. stuck on the south end of that place. You are stuck. Well, I walked in from that dirt road to wow. get to to oh, to goodness. help him. I walked all the way to the back. He was hung up on a stump, and I was like, I was pretty strong. I was like, we get that ranger off of it. I'm sure we can get that. Mm-mm. I had to walk all the way back out. <laughs> I did. I was thin and timbered down the road there for uh, AGC, uh, right there, um, forestry background and stuff. But anyway, uh, he's he's a mess. I I, I I I knew y'all were neighbors. Yeah, he's quite a interesting guy to talk turkey to talk about well, that, turkey. Yeah, that's neat. He he was interested in seeing how you how you did it. He was. He was kind of testing me in the woods, you know, and. Uh, I was nervous. I'm not going to tell you a lie. I was nervous. I mean, uh, he's taking me there on this place, and then he leans over and says, pushes me kind of on the back and says, it's your hunt. Do it your way. Uh, it. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was a unique thing to say. I, I, I've never, like, it, it makes me think about my my child, my son, mm-hmm. and want to just say, hey, it's time for you to, let's, mm-hmm. let's watch you do it, not me do it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that that's what it st- stuck out to me, I guess, is a unique thing. You got kids? I do. I have two. Are they are they interested in hunting? Oh yeah, sir. My uh my stepson, he's his uh his grandparents are from Scuba, so he's always turkey hunting around Scuba there. And then uh, I've got one that's seventeen years old. That's uh he's man, he's ready to turkey hunt. He's been mm. going by by himself and scouting and walking. So. Mm. You know, he's he's ready. I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually going to get to take him to Florida. So nice. I oh, that's a good. Qu- quick trip, but yeah. it'll be fun. Ain't nothing like hunting with him. That's right. I love I love hunting with kids. Anyway. Oh yeah. Speaking so. of, that just made me. I, I've never asked this, Doxy, but was there a day when you like? I'll, I'll just say Neil. Did you let say okay? You can go by yourself today. Um. Yeah, there was actually. He, you know, he took to it a little younger than Daniel and we both all knew it and so we were all staying in the other little cabin we have up there in uh, Sumter County and uh, I said you know because I knew he you know he was just going to walk from the cabin he wasn't waiting for him to get off lost or anything and he was always good with directions but he wasn't he might have been nine, 10 maybe uh, he might not have been nine, 10 I hate to say it he was by himself probably shouldn't have been People don't get mad at me. But anyway, I went <laughs> I went for a drive with Daniel and called up a turkey. Daniel killed. And when we got back, Neil, he called up a turkey by himself and killed it. 
How about oh, that? That's awesome. Yep. Look, that that's funny. You're talking about had was good with direction. Mm -hmm. That 17 year old, oh man, I, I had he got lost in a 10 acre patch of woods one time. <laughs> this is I, look, I'm gonna throw him under the bus right here anyway because I love him. I I said, where are you at, son? He said, I'm down here on this creek somewhere in this cedar thicket. And I was like, well, you can't be far. It's an 80 acre, but it had a 10 acre patch of timber and brush around it, you know. I said, you just stand still and we'll honk the horn. And I honked the horn, and I heard it come back, reverberate through his phone into my. <laughs> that is the true story. I said, I just heard my own horn come through the phone. He goes, well, I don't know where I'm at. I'm like, you can't be, but right here in front of me. Can you not see my lights? Says, Man, that was a good one. I'm <laughs> telling you. That's hilarious. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. He's uh, a mess. I still took it carefully. You know, that was a absolutely, you know, walk across the lake now and stay right there. You know, surely it'd be one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, it's something to be careful about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a day though when the, when the kid gets to that age. Yeah, but I mean, I'm getting close with but, mine. You know, this is yeah. the place we own. This wasn't even a lease or something, so yeah, it was totally safe. You know, when you get up, and you're 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 hunting a place with place. other people on it or public land or something. That's a whole I, different. Yeah, different yeah. Ball that's game. right. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, I mean, they need to be old enough to be driving their own car and be very practiced yeah. and whatever. That's yeah, very just, well you can't said. be too careful with it, Bobby. But you know, they're different. They're all different. They so are that was a different, different time frame too. Then I wasn't, and look, I wasn't in a hurry. At all, uh, I, it, I mean, I, I wish they would. And my most fun hunts today are either have been, you know, Daddy can't go really anymore, but it's going with them. I mean, that's my favorite hunts are with my kids yeah, or, that, or with my dad. But that was just because that I could let them both go still. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's how it should be. Yeah, I was lucky. My dad always let me. He never told me no. That's why I love turkey hunting. Yeah, we went turkey hunting every chance we could get. School whatever i killed my first yeah, turkey i caught up with in sumter county not at, down at the bluff but with daddy and uncle bud one morning they were going hunting on the back of the property back there where chris and piggy live now and uh they just dropped me off i remember daddy had his old bronco little old short broncos they made back then they just dropped me off and walked to the back of that big pasture and you know there should be one down there somewhere and the turkey gobbled and i i fooled with him all morning long i never moved at the time i mean i you know i had the old Lead, yep, or just yep, yep, yep. Nothing in my arsenal but a hen yep. And finally, uh, he just quit gobbling. And so I just sat there and sat there and sat there. And so I'm going to get up. They said, I forgot I had, you know, everybody had a watch back then. They said they would pick me up at 10 o'clock. I better get back up and leave. And so I called a couple of times and he didn't gobble. He'd been, been gobbling for a while. And I was just fixing to get up and look from a total opposite direction. Here he came out of that pasture and he walked down the hill. I killed him. And I was the most proud, proud of them when I shot my first one with him or anything. That's the proudest I may have ever been. It's yeah, a big yeah. step doing it, it on your own. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. You, and he said, just like you did before, he said, son, when a, when a young man is old enough to go out on his own and take game for the family, it's the first big step from a boy becoming a man. Mm -hmm. And it's just like an old Western movie or something, but he told me that. I, man, I bet I, you was puffed up. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's good I stuff. was very puffed up. Yeah. He was puffed up. Yeah. Know? I... I'm getting wow. close. So. Well, Lyle, we appreciate you coming over. Yeah. yeah. Thank y'all for and we're, having me. We're real proud of Houndstooth. You guys well, I, uh, I, hear I, good things. Well, thank you. We appreciate y'all's support. All the Moss. I Road. think y'all need to get Bobby a Houndstooth hat to wear. You know, uh, I'm not opposed to. And I, I it's the, it's the, no, the I'm not Houndstooth. talking about that. I'm talking about the sure enough Houndstooth. Yeah. Nah, yeah, nah, I, I, oh, pro yeah I probably, you're talking about, I yeah. probably wouldn't do that. A fedora, maybe one of those <laughs> yeah, Houndstooth yeah. fedoras. Oh, yeah. he'd look good, man. Yeah. Bobby, I'd say we'll make a bed and I'll wear, you know, something yeah. that looks like Auburn. If you, I'm not even, I'm Auburn. not from Mississippi State, but yeah. I just know how it wears on Bobby, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Well, so Kerry Wicks, does he really sound that good on a mouth call? I know. He sure feels like he, he he's, he's pretty He's pretty <laughs> good on a mouth call now. He's, he's a good turkey hunter. Hit it, Kerry. The KB the, the only he thing, do hey, it. Look, the only thing when, when Kerry started turkey hunting with me, he goes, I don't know how you hunting this thick stuff. Yeah. Because <laughs> I can remember Kerry. That's the truth. There was a turkey gall, and Kerry was trying to get settled down. He, he had his camera equipment. And man, those old saw briars were getting a hold of every little old thing hanging off, you know. And it is, it's totally different regions where we hunt a lot. Yeah, but, um, yeah a lot of that turkey, a lot know. of that stuff in Tennessee is just, you know, closed canopy hardwoods. Hey, he's <clears> educated <throat> on turkeys and what they do I and think, why they do it. I, I mean, that's why he gets those pictures. I that's think right. I think it's easier where it's thicker. 
Myself? Yeah, you had to come around the corner. Yeah, and see you, you. you've got a you got, got a, a look, you got yeah. an advantage. You, yeah, you, you paint a picture to him Man, right you, there, and he'll walk me, into a trap. You catch one in a wide open park looking spot <laughs> woods. That's the mm-hmm. hardest thing there is. Yep. So well, that, would you do us a favor and let us know when Kerry's going to be in Alabama so that we yeah, – just we, give us a heads up. Knowing. Give, give yeah. y'all a heads up. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we, we can avoid him or yeah, so we can yeah. what, Bobby? Well, just, just so we just can be pay attention. That's right. We just ain't got to pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> Uh, well, look, I'm exhausted. It's been a long day. Well, you, you stacked us up. You, yeah, you stacked did. us up, dude. I did. I am. Hey, yeah. but we're real lucky. All these guys are in town, you know, for the thing at the store. So and the the film uh, yeah. tonight. So we yeah, appreciate y'all be being here and being in the be studio. Oh, it goes gosh, way better when we're going to talk. Here. We're going to have to get together and talk about that next week. Yeah, 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 yeah we yeah. will. Bonus thing. All right, Lyle, Lyle Gilbert, Houndstooth Calls. We really appreciate you being here. You sound fantastic on a box call. Yeah, you Thank do. you. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it. Really do. Thank you, y'all for having me. Yeah. Get, get that way. It's our pleasure. Why don't you say goodbye, Dudley? Goodbye, Dudley. Get us out of here, Rob. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Gamekeeper Podcast. And be sure to tune in again. Subscribe to Gamekeeper Farming for Wildlife magazine. And don't miss the Mossy Oak Properties Fistful of Dirt podcast with my good buddy, Ronnie Cuz Strickland.